Thank you, everybody, for joining us for our 33rd Academic Training Partners meeting. Um, Peter Mawangi, I'm an orthopedic technologist at North Rift Community Based Rehab Center in Kenya, along with her, uh, his colleague Daisy, will be presenting during this meeting today. Thank you, and the floor is all yours, Peter and Daisy. Thank you so much. Uh, uh, just like a critic, as a, as a well laid it out, my name is Peter Mwangi. I'm an orthotic prosthetic uh, technologist, um, a practitioner from Kenya. And um, I also work with the North Rift com Community uh, Best Reputation Center. And uh, what we do here normally is try just to improve the quality of life of persons living with disability. So it's an opportunity to have uh, this guest with you um, to see in this uh, profound meeting and platform to discuss this. So um, let me start by um, uh, <laughs> introducing ourselves uh, as we go by the name North Rift Community uh, because of the community that we service in the North Rift region of Rift Valley. And uh, of course, the center that uh, we're presenting today is, the, is a CBR center, Community Based Reputation Center. So Thank you, Critic, once again. And uh, allow me now to proceed to <coughs> slide two, who we are. Uh, the North Rift CBR is a self-help organization that operates under the Anglican Chart Diocese of Victorette. We serve people with disabilities. Uh, this, is our, this is our number one category of clients that we see. Uh, the center is to majorly serve all these people and to provide the best of quality and superior patient care to individuals living with disability. So quality is our best to give this, and uh, we are a whole team. We have a team that uh, we'll speak about as we go We go down the presentation. You shall see the team, you shall meet them. And so uh, we also enable them to achieve full physical, psychological recovery and Christian counseling. That's why I explained as our center is a faith-based organization. So that's uh, precisely about who we are. And in case, as I continue, in case you guys have any questions, uh, kindly, uh, I just unmute your mic and ask me. I'll free. I'll be free to explain. Yeah, Kritika, do you have anything? Uh, is it okay if we go on the slideshow so the, the text is a little bigger when you're sharing your screen? I'm okay, it's okay. Thank you. If I go to the slideshow, so you can uh, click on the slideshow. Um, slide on the bottom show. of on the bottom of your screen in the menu next to uh, bottom right right corner, 66 percentage next to it is an icon. One, two, three, fourth one. Yes, there you go. Nice. Thank you. Wow, that's good. Wow. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, um, is that good? Is that good enough? It's perfect. Thank you, Peter. Wow, that is good. Uh, so let me give a little background history of who we are, uh, where this whole uh, program was fetched from. Uh, in the year 1995, uh, there was um, uh, a physiotherapist uh, by the name Canon Pasha Hutchison. Uh, from the Epicoso Diocese of Los Angeles, uh, who began and completed uh, this program in 1995. And uh, she came just as a, yes? Okay. Yes? Sorry, sorry. Okay, it's okay, thank you. Um, uh, uh, also her background was in, is in Christianity, the, in the spiritual ministry. So when she came in 1995, uh, and a background in professional background is in physical therapy. And um, she began this ministry as well as this program in our facility way back in 1995. And um, mainly it was a place to share the love of God to all and um, um, uh, caring for the patients before and after surgeries at the AICQ International Hospital, uh, who are mainly, uh, are also part of, the, of our major partners, uh, the Bethany Kids and the AICQ International based at Kijabe. There are, uh, as we go through the presentation, you see there are major partners in the same. So 
Uh, the next slide shows um, uh, the, the various, I think critical, will you be able to share this with the, with the group later? Yes, I'll be sure to do that. Thank you. Wow, oh, old partner. So it's okay. So is it okay if uh, I run through into the, you know, the good and the uh, yes, uh, yeah, it's okay. Yes. So so you can read through later about uh, the so our vision and our mission. So let's tell our vision. Our vision is to empower people with disabilities in in the community, attaining affirming their human dignity and worth. So our vision is to see every PWD empowered. That's why we talk about of advocacy. So we're here to represent that very well. And our mission itself is itself also better also is to facilitate the progressive transformation for people with disability towards improved livelihoods. Uh, that's why you see one of our manifestos is we have, uh, you know, our pillars is to, we conduct outreach, uh, outreach activities. Part of that is to, uh, reach these people or to gain access to them and see how best possible we can help them. And also part of that mission is also to provide monitoring and evaluation services to see how well they are transformed since our last time we there, since our last visit, since our last provincial in terms of assistive te technologies, in terms of, you know, uh, food, in terms of any other uh, benefit that we've taken to them, how, how far have they, you know, transformed, how far are they better themselves. So that is our vision, that is our mission. Our major partners is the Epicostal, they come first because as you, you heard from the background, beef background, they are our founders. So uh, they let, we're saying let uh, Madam Pasha Hutchison because uh, she passed on uh, around 2007. Uh, but uh, uh, as you can see, she laid down a very good principle, a very good foundation, which until now, it's, li it's a living, uh, it's a living proof uh, that uh, disability is not inability, and um, we are here to demonstrate that. So we are living through a legacy, and that's why we keep on uh, focusing on the best ways on how we can improve these services. That's the reason we are here today to partner with ICWP. So, being our major partners, one is the Pentecostal Diocese of Los Angeles. Uh, we have Wills for the, for the World. Wills for the World, they give us um, 75 percent of the of all they receive of their donations in terms of wheelchair provincial. The last time we had this provincial was in uh, 2018, whereby uh, they provided for us wheelchairs, uh, crutches, uh, walking frames. So uh, every every time they, they receive a donation, we receive 75% of their donation. And it, this happens every two years. Every two years, they provide, they, they give us 75% of their donation every two years. Uh, so we are, they're one also of our partners. Um, the reason why you hear two years and it's 2018, 2020, because uh, by the time it was 2020, we were in the pandemic, uh, Corona pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. So a lot of, you know, things came into a halt, but uh, we are receiving yet again from them in 2023. So next year, we, we, November, uh, we shall be receiving another donation, which is 75%. And uh, when you get these donations, uh, they go through our mobile outreach. We identify beneficiaries, we free to provide services as usual. So other partners are the AICQ International, uh, uh, Q International, and uh, the Bethany Kids Hospital. Uh, they help us in uh, through, through our orthopedic screen services. They help us uh, with our uh, uh, corrective surgeries, yeah, and um, and, and uh, follow-up problems on, on the same. Also, we have uh, local partners like St. Luke's Hospital in Eldoret, Chain Eldoret, within our vicinity, Moi Teaching and Referral Hospital. We have Tenwick Mission Hospital, and we have Advanced Prosthetics and Authority Care Center, which is uh, which I lead in that in that in that program, uh, Advanced Prosthetic and Authority Care Center. So all these others are uh, are local partners. Uh, most of them they help us in terms of corrective surgery and you know to correct you know things that are, are beyond our measure. And uh, to facilitate uh, in, in to improve the function of, the, of these clients, and then advanced prosthetics help, comes in to provide assistive technology in terms of orthotics you know, and prosthetics, as you will understand that. Uh, next, I'll talk about organizational objectives. Uh, yeah, we create, we we tend to create an awareness in community meetings, churches, 
uh, based at SEK it stands for Anglican Church of Kenya. So being been 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 seeing this thing through the lens of you know of, of the church, we, we try to use churches as one of our forums to spread and create awareness, uh, education of parents, community of disability and people with disability. Also to facilitate the evaluation and assessment of children with different abilities to ascertain their needs, to facilitate, uh, number three, to facilitate people with different abilities to engage in economic activities that will enhance their social welfare, self-help. And so remember I said, we're trying to empower, we're trying to transform. So whenever we reach these people, these are the fundamentals. We are trying to, to empower them by transforming their lives, you know, in general. So also to facilitate for school placement for children living with disability in cooperation with the education assessment and resources centers. Yeah, we work in good coordination and harmony with the education assessment and resource centers to see how best we place these children into school for education so that they, are, they can improve their life by gaining knowledge. Also to eradicate disability in our communities through advocacy and empowerment. Uh, so far, if any questions, let me know. You can write them down so that you can ask me later. Uh, when you talk of no thrift, what do you mean? No thrift, as um, um, described by this map, the small map that you've seen here, it is an umbrella term for a constituent of, uh, of basically eight, but uh, it's still debatable. The other two, you can write it down. It's uh, Baringo County and Bungoma County. We have number seven, which is Baringo County, and number eight, which is Bungoma County, but they, they're still being um, debated if they still uh, lie under the North Rift. But the ones which have been mainstreamed under the North Rift region, number one is Wasingishu County. It is the leading, the very same county which I come from, the very same county which uh, our organization comes from. We have environment counties like Elgeo Marakwet, uh, those are our neighboring counties. That is Naundi County, Transoya County, West Pokot County, and Trukana County. Uh, especially from four, five, and six, these are more of marginalized communities. So most of the people in Transoya, West Pokot, and Trukana are, are, uh, are impoverished, are in an impoverished society and community. Um, uh, um, most people from this, from the last three communities, uh, not most of them are, are you know, uh, are literate, uh, you know, the education, there is a, a bit, you know, um, most of the people there have not gone into, into school problems. So we have a lot of people even suffering from severe disabilities from these three counties. And uh, we also try to reach them as much as we can. We try to provide them, to minister to them, to, to, to work with them and see how best we can improve their lives. So when you talk of North Rift, we talk of the six counties. So it's a vast, it's a very big, we, North Rift serves a very vast area in Kenya, you know, eight, eight to be specific. Yeah, eight to be specific. Um, our content that we'll be looking through, of course, uh, our structure, our interest with ICWG, uh, what would, would we talk of when we say faith-based ministry, uh, physical therapy, prosthetic and orthotics, which are provincial, mobile outreach and orthopedic screen. So, uh, uh, the CBR center structure it, it, in this facility is based on the following components, the spiritual ministry, physical therapy, prosthetic and orthotics, mobile outreach, orthopedic screening services where we, we used to, but we still consider it as part of our package, but we used to have pre and post surgery every two months, but due to funding that was, um, uh, was uh, brought to a halt for a while, uh, but uh, is to be uh, re uh, reinstated uh, once we get the right funding for that. And also we provide wheelchair services as we shall see right ahead. So uh, our interest in ISWP mainly, I should state that uh, uh, we are trying to establish uh, a sector resource for information related to wheelchair service and provision in Kenya. These services are not well known, well not identified with a lot of uh, people. Um, we've been in, into the community and that's why we're speaking as those who have interacted with the community in the region of Kenya, not just as an issue. Not all people uh, are, are well versatile with this information. And um, ICWP uh, is one of the established, I think, um, uh, platforms based on you know, professionalizing wheelchair services. Uh, they have, you know, um, 
the wheelchair, the, the, the win up, you know, a network, uh, wheelchair network uh, platform whereby, you know, uh, you, you know, we can centralize this information, we can um, reach our people from, you know, the vast communities that we have, we can, um, we can see how well we can, we can, we, we can network and, you know, and, and try to improve our wheelchair services in Kenya. That's why uh, our first is to act as the sector of resource for information related to wheelchair service and provision in Kenya and Eastern Africa. Secondly, we want to establish and develop a center for excellence in production of quality standards for wheelchairs to be used in advance, in, in, in advance environments. Uh, this should be in our environment, our terrains. Uh, as you, you look, you, you look further there, you'll see that uh, we, we are trying to, 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 to eradicate the, the, the history and the memories of, you know, wheelchair graveyards. You know, we Africans have been receiving a lot of donations, you know, this wheelchair that we receive every time, but we found sometimes they don't suit the terrains that we have. So it's a cycle of wheelchair, it comes, it's been used, then it's been dumped. There is no recycle because sometimes even we don't have the right repairment, you know, resources for food. So what do we do? They're just being dumped. So we're trying to establish a center of, of producing local wheelchairs, which are of quality, as per our terrain or environment, local terrains. So that's what we're trying to do. And also we're trying, uh, our main, another interest, number three, not, last but not least, is we are trying to be uh, a wheelchair um, skills program training center. Uh, I've been following up with uh, ICWB for a while now, and um, uh, my key interest is in the programs and the training in, 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 in the wheelchair skills program and training coordinations that they have from time to time. And we are very willing to, 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 to be part of that program uh, to learn and to be equipped with more knowledge uh, on the same platform on which a service and profession so that we, we can, for the betterment of our community, for the betterment of our, of our people. So those are our three main interests as outlined and we can go to our ministry. Uh, I won't take much here, as you know, we, we, we are hosted by, by the Anglican Church of Kenya. So what comes first is the spiritual ministry. So, the, so our, our organization believes in, in, you know, in, in the aspect of God healing, in the aspect of connection to people, to the community, based on God, both based on those uh, traits and attributes or relating to Christianity, uh, as much as we professionalize uh, our services. Uh, they believe on spiritual ministry first, then, you know, uh, the services. So that's what we talk of, a faith-based ministry. Even as we conduct our services, we believe that God, God will heal, God will provide something. Uh, we, the supernatural also has effect. You know, we've seen a lot of cases whereby, you know, the hospital had, you know, um, given up on whole hope and, you know, they come to our center. We have the clergy there, the, the priests and the reverends and all those counselors we have, the minister to the parents. That's where we had, the, you know, one of our objectives there. We're talking of, you know, even uh, counseling the parents because uh, we, we minister to the parents so Understand. So when we start healing from the parents, even to the to the to the to the children, it becomes you know it becomes well, it becomes all taken care of. Um, I said I won't take much time there. Uh, operational background of CBR, as I said, it's under the Anglican Church of Kenya for Dorit, and uh, uh, we can read that later when when uh, because most of the things here are just repetition, so we can. We can go to operational management. Uh, is it okay if I skip? Uh, you can allow me because of time. But um, under operational management, we we have a board of management where the decision bishop is the patron, patron of the organization, the SK, the CBR, and SK, the CBR, the Anglican Church of Care. Uh, on a daily basis, it is managed by a director or administrator. The first director was the late Canon Pasha Hutchison, the founder, as I explained, we then followed by Obadiah, Mainly the Reverend M. Evelyn Jerotich. Then currently we are working under the administration of Reverend Grace Birch in that order, as you just seen. And uh, the current CBR board members is, as we said, the patron who is uh, the right Reverend uh, Dr. Christopher Ruto, current board members. Then Mr. George Karanja is the chairperson of the board. 
Then we have Rhoda Busolo, uh, the vice chairperson. Rhoda Busolo is a nurse by profession. Then we have uh, Mr. Steven Kirunga, is a treasurer, also helps us with the auditing of our, of, of, of our finances. Then we have Reverend Grace B. Rich, the secretary of that board. We have um, Canon Peter Karanja, also a member. The rest, as you can see, they're just, uh, they're just uh, members. Um, so, of course, now we have a board, you know that uh, how we work. And uh, the type of disability seen and managed at our center, uh, uh, as we've listed, or at least that from polio, or at least that from meningitis and stroke, burns, you know, burn contractures, club foot, cleft and leaf palate, physical deformity, uh, cerebral palsy, endocephalus, microcephalus, uh, spina bifida, scoliosis, and limb length deficiency, uh, that is upper and lower extremity amputations. Um, now we come to our one of our you know backbones, which is the physical therapy, and we have the gentleman as you can see is is an old guy who used to serve uh, uh, in the in the in the in the government uh, premises before, um, long years ago. Then he resigned. When he resigned, he was incorporated by the late Canon Pasha at at the ministry at the SEK diocese. Uh, where we have a severe problem to come and also to serve because he, uh, he was a guy of uh, good excellence and order. And uh, since then, uh, since 2002, 2002 till that, two, 10, 10 years, uh, 20, almost 20 years, right? 20 years since his resignation in the, in, the, you know, in the government facility. So for 20 years, he has been serving under the, you know, the, 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 the ACK diocese. In, in, in providing his uh, his skills on physical therapy. And uh, as you see, this guy is so much, you know, skilled and vast in experience. He uses, you know, <laughs> sometimes people say an orthodox, uh, you know, he's not the mainstream, but, you know, his ways work and, you know, he uses local materials and um, and uh, and um, resources, as you see. Uh, he's been here with us since 2000 till, till, till that. And uh, even besides, um, uh, uh, everything, the COVID and everything he has been with us and, and is true to, to, to his service. As you can see, the tools that he uses in his sessions are some, some you know, bamboo sticks and um, that is the physical therapy room. As you can see, this is our physical therapy room. He uses, uh, he, and he provides, by the way, he provides uh, therapy to both the old and the young. And he uses bamboo sticks, some elastic rubber bands, you know, some some um, tire that has been worn out and, you know, he, he cuts them very well, he uses them for his various purposes. And, you know, we, we, we've, we've also attached some videos. Uh, you can see in this page, you see other testimonials are on the documentary videos link is attached below. Uh, I, uh, you can go to the testimonials, you'll see a lot of works, works that we've documented, proof by testimonials of children of others that he has really helped, they've really transformed. Uh, he uses even, uh, you know, dry maize combs with steel with maize uh, for for restoration of you know nerves and blood circulation. Uh, I've seen not more than ten, not less than ten children improve their sight through this technology. Him using this maze, you know, he has been doing this for years. This guy is excellent in what he does, and we are proud to have the five him in our center. So that is part of our physical therapy, and we have our testimonials here and the links shared and the times and periods as you see and you know feel free to share this critique so that people can go and uh, you know uh, subscribe in our in our channel and also share widely with, with their with their with, with their network our, our testimonials and see what we do at our facility uh, we have prosthetics and orthotics and i can just say briefly about this since i'm the director there um, since the establishment of this organization, the community, North Rift Community Base in 1990 at Kimango. Before, by the way, before 1995, this center was at uh, the facility you see here, Kimango Health Center in Nandi County. We used to serve in Nandi County because by the time Kanon Pasha came, uh, he was referred to this health center because there, there was still some, a bit of, you know, politics and all that in the church. Uh, they couldn't let her uh, in, bring this mission to the facility where we are now. So they first sent her to the Kimongor Health Center in Nandi County, where she started there as a volunteer therapist. 
And um, later on in 1995 is where, whereby the, the church neo gave a consent to come and establish it at the ACK diocese in Wasingishu County where we are uh, currently located. And um, since then, even 1990, 1995, there was still a very huge gap you know, the physical therapy was there, but uh, there was no any other services uh, like, you know, uh, prosthetic orthotics and all that. There was no wheelchair service provision and all that. So uh, it, only later through uh, our partners like uh, Bethany and the ICQ International in 2017, uh, people like uh, Wheels for the World is where we, uh, the Venetians started to, 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 to get, you know, uh, donations and, you know, assistance based on, on wheelchairs. But still, there was a very huge real gap on prosthetics and orthotics. Therapy is being done, but you know there is no splinting, bracing to go hand in hand with the service that is being countered in therapy. So that's why in, in we talk of um, in 2020, uh, I came in with that brilliant idea. We bridged, we we conciliated, we we had our discussion with the facility, and they saw a very good interest on us uh, incorporation of services together. And in 2020, till now, we work hand in hand with a center uh, that is uh, the Notrip CBR. And um, we're trying to, to pro and also right now we're trying, like you see uh, in, in, in bulletin number four, we have recently also started to provide and fit amputees with prosthetic crying blades and train them for the T1, T64 Paralympic category. Uh, our feature vision on this department is to print uh, 3D sockets, um, and um, for clients who come from low income families. Like I told you, there's a very big um, number of people with severe disability from my area. Most of them have also been amputees. And you know, most of them cannot, you know, coming from severe adverse you know, environments, they cannot afford these services. So we are, we are, we are, we are currently in a discussion with some, 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 some key partners whom we believe all will be well. We're trying to, to see if we can, um, because I've been in the 3D business for a long time now. Uh, and uh, I'm talking to some uh, friends of mine and partners, see how we can get uh, uh, 3D printed in our facility so that we can print sockets freely for these kind of families and persons who are affected. So as you can see, these are most of, most of our recent works. Uh, this is a, the, the, the first picture is me, the gentleman uh, called Mr. Aaron. I just fitted him with a 3D prosthetic socket from CrossFit Technologies. That is here. Background at the world there you see, we also, uh, every year we do a project uh, with a global partner called Global Civic Sharing. Uh, global Civic Sharing uh, are, are also a partner through advanced technology, advanced prosthetics, and uh, a, they, 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 they also should appear, sorry, I didn't list them, but they sh also should appear in the list of partners. Uh, I shall correct that and send to Kutika because, um, Number one, they, 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 they come majorly as partner through the advance in provision of uh, assistive devices, and that is prosthetic and orthotics. They, they fund through advance for beneficiaries whom, whom they, 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 they get providence as uh, the list that they, ha they have per quarter, per, per, you know, they provide these services uh, every quarter of the year. So, so, so every time they have beneficiaries, they fund the services through advanced technology. So you can see we have a project, as you can see, there's a banner there, and it's uh, most of the funders and sponsors through this program, uh, it's a Korean-based you know, uh, organization. And um, also we, they work with Samsung and you know, Heart Foundation. So number two, number three, slide number three, it's our client called Ian, Ian Mwangi, who also is our, our first beneficiary in the prosthetic running blood. And, um, uh, Ian works stably 100% perfectly. You, you cannot even identify whether or not he's, he's on a prosthetic limb. Um, on May 17, 2022, as you can see, we had a big talk. Um, uh, the lady in blue is our, um, is our, is our it's also we can call her one of our part patron in the, 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 in the CBR facility. And um, her name is, uh, um, Madam Grace Robert Dines, and uh, she came all the way from, you know, South California, and she's from the group that comes, that is the founding group, the Picosto group of Los Angeles. Uh, she, 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 she worked uh, hand in hand uh, with the late canon 
Persia, and she and lately on May 17, 22, she made a two day trip to Eldoret from South California, Los Angeles, to come and sit down with us and see uh, the mass movement of growth that we're making, to see the new clinical need department that we've already started the prosthetic department. Here, the picture is, is in the prosthetic department where we do fabrication of and repairment of wheelchairs, prosthetics, all of that. And um, part of our big discussion, she's looking forward to, to, to her to, to see how we can um, successfully drive through our vision and our, uh, our mission, that is to see that every person with disability out there um, get, gain access to assistive technology. So also June 21st, 2022, we've been really, really been blessed this year and, and in due time. Also, we, we, are, we were visited by our mentor in, 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 in the project that we're working on, on prosthetic blood, uh, the guy in spectacles, uh, his name is Marco Cesetto. From 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 my left, uh, uh, the lady is our is our administrator, the director of the facility, Reverend Grace Mirage. Then me in the lab court, Peter Mwangi. Then we have the same client, uh, Ian Ian Mwangi, and then we have Marco Cesetto. All the way also from Florida, USA. He came for a week visit, and uh, he passed by our facility to discuss us on how we can um, add gain access into the category that I've stated uh, before, the T61, T64 category uh, of Paralympic for athletes who want to participate in running in the Paralympics. So Ian is our first, and so far we've already identified 10 others whom we'll be working, and maybe in the near future we can also share that documentary with you. Uh, now we are coming to the wheelchair provincial services. Mainly what we do in the wheelchair provincial services is a uh, First, of, co of course, we admit these patients who go through wheelchair measurement and prescription. That is done by um, me, the, 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 the auto technician. We also have uh, uh, um, our OT and our physiotherapist who also work along with us. And um, these, you can see as the, as the you know, the, 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 it's been represented. Uh, one way after admission, okay, basically is the wheelchair measurement and prescription which leads to the issuance of a prefabricated wheelchair, most probably a donated one. That's one way, one way to go about it. If you, we already have that donation with us, so we can just measure and, pres and prescribe the right wheelchairs for the measurement. We see what we have in store with us and we see what we can provide. But the other way is, uh, as you can see, the arrow pointing down is local fabrication of prescribed wheelchair. This way, after we've taken the measurement, uh, of course, we can determine from the prescription, maybe this patient is for trial, a tricycle, this patient is for a special seat or just a normal standard wheelchair, uh, but a local one to be fabricated. We then take these measurements to our, we have our local persons who deal with fabrication and you know, uh, they, 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 we provide the measurements for them, they do local fabrication, which later on is also fitted uh, per the adjustments. And uh, before uh, discharging the patient, most of the time we give advice and also we try to adjust, see if there is any adjustment for, for, for the fitting of the client. We do the adjustments, we give advice, and then we discharge the patient. So that's all, all about the wheelchair service provincial in our center. Uh, local fabrication of wheelchairs. I think uh, there's a, a guy from wheelchair who was supposed to join us. Let me see if he's in here so that I can give him a chance to speak. Also on the same. Uh, Peter Ewing, his name is Peter Diongo. Peter Ewing, if you're in, you can unmute. Are you in, Peter? Uh, he was supposed to join, but I can speak on his behalf. And uh, uh, by fabricating local wheelchairs, like I said, we're trying to eradicate wheelchair graveyard. We have a lot of donations in Africa coming in forms of wheelchairs and all that uh, when it comes to provisions of assistive technology. And most of these wheelchairs, they, they, they don't fit the standards for our training local advanced team environments. And most of the time we find ourselves in ending up, you know, uh, dump deposits of, of these wheelchairs. That's why we call them wheelchair graveyard. So that's it. it. It leads us to point number two, to provide the right design of wheelchairs for local terrains. That's why we started providing local wheelchairs, which we, we fabricate locally. Also to facilitate ease of manufacture, provision, use and repair of wheelchairs. So it's, it's recyclable. It, it goes back into function. It doesn't go into the graveyard. 
so it goes back into function. So hence, increasing the usability, affordability, and value of the wheelchair. So by having independence, and that's why our interest is in, we want to, 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 to gain more concept on, and to, to have more participation in the wheelchair skills program. And that's why, that's why you see in our interest with ISWP, we're trying to, to bring that, you know, uh, um, um, to, to, to instead that out loud that, uh, well, as also we're growing into that perspective and that bright future, we, we want also to participate to gain more knowledge in wheelchairs, skills, programs, and training, you know, that, that are, and to even have, you know, um, the key mentorship and partnership of our international platform like ISWP gives us an honor and, um, and, 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 and a leverage to be in a position to, 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 to better the services and uh, when it comes to wheelchair pro, pro, professionally, the services in, in wheelchair industry. So that's what we'll, you can see, we're talking of things like, you know, increasing its ability, affordability, and the value of wheelchair. Also number four, by having independence of the design, provincial and use of local wheelchairs, we increase the participation and achieve independence of disabled people or persons who have no access to appropriate and affordable wheelchair use. So that's all about that. And um, you can see some pictures of our local wheelchair fabrications. Uh, from the time we were trying to work on the seat, uh, we use local materials, as you can see, plywood, uh, plywoods, and um, and um, plywoods, and the and the and the and the and um, you know uh, foam foam sheets, all that you know from table number two, and um, raw materials like you know steel, to aluminium. We, we proceed to to to, to you know local materials that we use. these are the local materials that we use for wheelchairs. Then you can see right there the frame is being mounted to the to the wheels. And then now we have finished products, even with our, uh, you know, um, carriers uh, that they, that, you know, some of these persons use them in their businesses and, you know, in, in everything, they can store their, their things so that uh, they don't have to, to put them on the sides of the chair and on all that. Uh, we, they have well laid trays, as you can see, also these are our standard wheelchairs the other, the other side, you know, uh, with a foot plate, you know, a nice tray. Um, some of the things also that we do locally fabricate are the crutches. We see our local crutches, uh, local standing aid. These are for cerebral palsy children, our local walking frame. Um, yeah, you can see them in use. And uh, uh, this 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 picture is we are talking of. Uh, we brought it this this in here to talk of uh, the time we received our donation uh, from Wheels Wheels for the World. When Wheels for the World donated some of the donation for us, this is uh, in 2018. You can see. Uh, these are the type of wheelchairs we receive from them. And uh, yeah, they're quite well, quite good by then. Uh, you can see what we received. I'll share also the kind of donation that we received later with Kritika and she can freely see if she can also share with you the rest of the team. Uh, number four, mobile outreach services. The CBR goes on mobile outreach. So these, these I want to, to give my colleague days because uh, she coordinates more on the field other than I, as uh, that's what we're that today she can talk of the situation that happens in the field, more of what happens in the field. So Daisy, in little time you can just share with me. Yeah. Um, thank you so much. Um, so um, I joined the CBR in the year 2021, 2020, at the end of 2020. So um, I mostly go there to take uh, the pictures and, and uh, videos and just take all the information of all the patients and people that you want to see there. So we usually go for these outreach, outreach services because most of the people in this, uh, in our, in the Wasingishu, in the North Rift region, um, don't have information or awareness about um, free services or um, disability. Like they don't even have any information about this, um, uh, these issues. They don't know where they can go. They don't know where they can be accepted without having to pay for those services. So we usually go for those outreaches um, whenever we are informed by uh, social service agents. They are usually social service uh, people from the social, sub social service uh, 
departments in the government who usually inform us about the disabled children around the area. Um, so when they inform us, we go there. We, we mostly go there with food, with donated food like maize or, or beans. Uh, we go see them. Then we get information about how, what they are suffering, what, how long they've suffered for, they've suffered with their condition. And we also let them know that it's not, that now that they're disabled, it's not that, it's not an inability. not an inability in any way and need that they can they can they that is most most especially the parents the parents are the ones who usually um hide or feel like it's uh, it's like a stigma to have um and disabled children so we usually um we usually talk to them about their child's condition and and encourage them to visit our facility visit our facility so that we can give them free services, even though they don't have transport, usually offers transport for them. So they can come with their, they can bring their children so that they can live a normal, healthy life and not have to abandon their children in that situation because it's, it's, it's not right. So thank you so much. Um, uh, um, these are some of the pictures of some of the outreach we went to um, on the first left. Um, his name is Job, and um, he was he was born with uh, without limbs. He was born without limbs, but uh, the parents decided that they sh they didn't want uh, the services. They didn't want to come for the wheelchair. They wanted to get other another form of other form of donations from other people. So that was well. Um, on uh, in the middle, she's called Elma. Um, she's doing well now. We uh, we offered her. We offered a wheelchair for her, and her, her mother still brings her occasionally. Uh, ever since the corona, you know, a lot of parents got, had a lot of challenges in coming back. So that's, that's, that's what we've been doing in the mobile outreach, just to create awareness mostly and to help them out whenever in whatever place we can. Because we, we offer free services. We're just letting them know that we, they have a place they can come without having to worry about the charges. So thank you. Yeah, as you remember, we stated that uh, this place was opened to, to, to communicate and to spread the love of God to all. So by that love, we that's why we are being led to, to reach everyone, uh, regardless of their background, creed, uh, nationality, uh, social economic background. No, we do not look into that. Uh, like Daisy said, utmost goal is to reach them, uh, finding access to them. That's why uh, we started, the, uh, we've been having the mobile outreach activity, which is mostly to reach them because most of these people, they cannot reach us, they cannot treat us. And so most of the time we try to access them so that we, provide, we, we take the services to them. And um, most of what they do when Daisy and the team, uh, because it's, the team is comprised of Daisy, Madame Birech, um, and um, other staff uh, that work with them. And most of what they do is, uh, they try to improve their livelihoods. They sometimes take food to them. Uh, they take clothes to them. They, they go and identify those who need medical attention. Like him, like the other time, there was a lady who was bleeding, having his mammary bleeding. It was a uh, you know breast cancer, and you know she has no you know money to go. So she was identified for a clinical uh, medical attention uh, that was to be facilitated facilitated through our foundation or through uh, the diocese. So and. The partners that we have that we work with them, the Bethany Kids Inter AIC International, Tenway Hospital, St. Luke's. So we work with these partners so that we see we can see how well can we help our society, our people. So they go there to identify beneficiaries, they go to the field to provide services, they go to create awareness, like she said. So our future plans, as you can see, is to we're trying to consider inclus inclusivity, all people to come into this. And especially if person living with disabilities in church leadership, uh, community opinion leaders, and government to eradicate social stigma attached to them. That's why we create awareness. It's our number one. Uh, improve the dignity and livelihoods of PWDs through assisting them, develop an income generating activity, hence be self reliance. We are trying to be, create independence. Uh, continuous creation of awareness, 
in communities about disability. And also uh, we're trying to uh, mobilize resources to extend uh, uh, our guest house. We have guest houses that are earn us revenue that are from time to time, uh, there are five guest houses that we, we, we use uh, as one of the avenues for, um, uh, for mobilizing our funds to run the CBR. So, because most of uh, the funding we get, uh, trust you me, comes from well wishes. So, uh, apart from the five guest houses that we have, uh, that you know generate uh, income for us, how to run the facility, uh, we don't have anything beyond that. So, because the other comes from you know well wishes, be it from be it in resource, be it in funding. However, so we really appreciate whatever we we we, we get, but uh, still, nevertheless, we run. We, we run our facility uh, because of um, the love we have for the community. And uh, this is what has been grooming us for, for, for a while. I see my friend uh, from, uh, uh, from our, our, techno, our specialist uh, has joined. I, uh, Peter, just uh, in about uh, three minutes, you can explain what you do when it comes to wheelchair. Can you just unmute Peter? Let me give Peter a chance. Peter, if you can hear me, just unmute. And you can say a little bit of what you do when it comes to wheelchair fabrication. He's our technician uh, who works on the, who, who, who fabricates the wheelchairs. Peter? Peter, if you can hear me, you can unmute. Okay. He hasn't joined with audio yet. So uh, I will continue to, to, to number uh, um, to to our key interest, which is, which is our main focus right now in sports. Uh, aside from the physical benefits, you know, professionalizing the different kinds of cadres uh, of disability into sports, i.e., the wheelchair. These are these are things that are is our main focus right now. I also have one of my partners here with us called Lasse. He's from the Levitate uh, company of prosthetics. Uh, Lasse, you can just say hi. Lasse is here, here you can say hi. Lasse, you can just say hi. If you're able to. Uh, Lasse is the CEO and founder of uh, Levitate. A uh, company that is also in, uh, trying to help us to promote uh, our, our our key interest in sports, and uh, by doing this, uh, I was trying to bring this concept about as uh, uh, because I say the physical benefits professionalize the different kinds of cadres into sports uh, like wheelchair basketball, wheelchair tennis, and the running athletes, uh, the T sixty one, T sixty four category. We are also trying to establish confidence in our clients. That's one we're trying to boost their ability to communicate, lead well within diverse groups. And we're also trying to, to create uh, them to be successful in life beyond athletics, and in general, just to improve their quality of life. I think that's the general, general assumption. <laughs> uh, I, you know, that should be you know, the general knowledge when it comes to provision of assistive technology or devices. So I've tried to squeeze, sorry if I've quickened things, but I've tried to squeeze uh, the little time that I had, I told you, uh, I was limited for one hour specifically. So I just wanted to, to, to bring out the whole uh, point, you know, down within a very short time so that uh, I can give the, uh, I can give like the mic to Kritika, to moderate and to, for any people who have any questions and, uh, any input, any advice, we are ready. We are, we are so much, you know, humble to receive. So thank you, Kritika. You can, uh, you can, you can take back the mic kindly. Yeah. Thank you, Peter. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. That was a very inspirational uh, presentation. It's, it's so lovely to see all the great work that you're doing, you and your colleagues. It's wonderful. And we really applaud all your um, wonderful activities. So I'll now open up the floor for any questions for Peter and his colleague. Oh, hi, Peter. It's Kevin Baptist here um, from Perth, Western Australia. 
I was really interested in your presentation, but I'm just trying to get a scale of how big and how far people would have to travel from the furthest regions or those um, provinces to your centre. Okay. Uh, is, 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 not that, is not that far. Uh, North Rift is not that far. Uh, when you talk of, um, uh, a, let, let us go here, let us go back here, let us go back here, uh, let us go back to the map. Let's go back to the map. When you talk of, um, when you talk of, um, when you talk of, uh, uh, we talk of North Rift, uh, we see we have a Singishu El Geo. So like from a Singishu where we're, our main center is, that's where, like, let's say that's the central area, uh, to El Geo Maracuete is around two and a half hours drive. There's, there's no flight. To 90 counties also around two, two and a half hours drive. Transway is around three hours drive. To West Pocot is around uh, four and a half to five hours drive. Then to Trukana is around five and a half to six hours drive. So Trukana is the farthest, but um, it's, 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 it's a mid Easter day. That's why you remember then the outreach, uh, uh, you know, orthopedic screen, we, we talked of pre and post. We used to have a program when, when you had funding, we used to have these people pre, before the, the doctors from AICQ or Kijabe come and Bethany kids, they come for the orthopedic screening services. We used to, to coordinate transportation for these people from all the way from Tukana, West Poco, Transwaya, 90, and El Geo. They come uh, some, you know, like a day or two days prior to the, to the, to the screen services. Then they are, they are being reviewed. If, if uh, also they're, they're booked for any corrective surgery, for lift, pallet, for correction of bones, for whatever, for whatever, uh, for the club food deformities. Uh, after the surgery, also, we host them back in our facility. We, we have, uh, apart from the five bed guest house or the five room guest house we have a uh, uh, 30 33 beds that we, uh, that serve as wards in the facility so we we, we arrange for accommodation for them and we are, we arrange for food and breakfast and supper or dinner for them uh, for the next like two weeks as we monitor if the progress is well for those who are they don't uh, progress well we call uh, the doctors they can we can arrange, arrange for them to go back to seek medical attention for those who are well we, dis we discharge them so from these communities so it's not that far the only farthest uh, community here is from Turkana County so it's not that far yeah all right thank you wow yeah welcome any other person a quick Hi. question please Sorry. Um, my question, what's the average cost for a wheelchair and the dura durability? Like how long does it serve the client? Our local wheelchair? Yes. Our lo our lo ah, they last. We, the ones that we receive uh, donations, the ones for the, most of the time, uh, they don't last us. We, we have this local because uh, we, we, you know, most of them are for me, you know, still. And, uh, you know, they survive the, the harsh terrains that we have locally. The, the, the uneven terrains, environment, the harsh weather. And you know, I've seen I've seen one last for three years and yet we donated to another person. It lasted for three years and yet we donated to another person. It was, it was seen. So most of the things that we, they wear out are the tires, which are replaceable, like I stated earlier, it can be replaced. So you see, it's, it can be recycled back to function. And uh, the price is not that much. We sell them uh, at about uh, 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 23 dollars to to around uh 23 no not 230 is it 230 yeah 230 yeah no we say we, say, we provide the, uh, yeah sorry sorry in use this uh 230 usd to to between the range of usd is 230 to 250 usd um that is for standard wheelchair and uh, for tricycle, as you've seen, uh, they go up to 280 USD. Yeah, that is it. So it's fair. It's a fair amount of price, and uh, it serves long. I've seen. I've seen most of, of, of which they go up to five years. You know, because uh, as you can see, even they're well built. They're well strong. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, yeah. So Lee had a question. Go ahead, Lee. Hi, Peter. Thank you very much for your presentation. Uh, You've very, really developed a very comprehensive uh, program, uh, wide-reaching, and, and uh, it's very impressive. Uh, congratulations. 
Thank you so regard, much. With regard to the wheelchair skills, per, uh, wheelchair provision, excuse me, I'm wondering whether um, you mentioned a few, some of the measurements and, and education that goes around that. I'm wondering whether um, the people who get the wheelchairs or their caregivers get any training in how to, uh, how to use them properly. Uh, like I said, we advise, but uh, uh, still been um, uh, been 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 on our foundational and our development stages. That's why we 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 thought it would be uh, uh, good to establish our interest uh, with the ICWP when it comes to wheelchair skills programs and training, so that uh, we we become more skills and more oriented, more oriented oriented uh, when it comes to 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 know. Uh, wheelchair skills provision, you know, and uh, advising our clients on, you know, how to handle a client and all that. Uh, the only knowledge we have is how to, to fabricate, how to fit. Of course, uh, being, a, being a medical practitioner, I know one or two or three things that I need to advise the client, but we, we, we are seeking more, more of, you know, getting on those, you know, on that international um, heights on, on how well to handle our clients and on how well to, to improve and to professional this industry. That's why we're seeking that guidance. Yeah, I, I mean, think today coming in here to present this, we're seeking more of, of that guidance when it comes to training, when it comes to improving our services, when it comes to the wheelchair service provision. Yeah. Just the, the, the training com, a step in the, the World Health Organization process is, has been shown by research to be one of the most helpful ones. And I'm gonna, I'll yeah. put in a, a link for you of a program we've developed that's free online, lots of videos and so forth. So yeah. if, if, in case that's of any wow. help. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we, yeah, we, we can we, we, we can also um, accept, you know, um, we can print, of course, but even if it, it can be sent in print on uh, some, you know, charts and, uh, you know, uh, you know, we you know what I'm trying to say, some, uh, uh, diagrammatic charts to explain these. Of course, we are, if um, Kritika could be um, could help us also to share with us uh, those on online um, training sessions and everything, and you know, see if a few of our guys can be certified and be willing also to provide the same services and skills to others. This is how we can professionalize and grow the industry. You know, uh, as we spread spread the knowledge across the network. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Lee. Thank you, Peter. I think. Sorry, the question. Uh, actually, it's not a question. So if I may intervene here, I just wanted to thank uh, Lee actually for the website. Uh, I teach at the university um, in uh, Jordan in the Middle East. And um, I didn't know it was you talking. So now when I saw the link, I just want to thank you actually for the website. Um, every year I use it to teach my students uh, when we talk about wheelchair skills. So it's a very helpful website. And I want to take this chance now that you're here to thank you so much for it, really. That's wonderful. Thank you so much, Maha. Um, so, Peter, um, if if you uh, if you and your colleagues are available, I'm hearing that you need a lot of training support. So we can go over together separately in a separate um, Zoom call and then talk about how we can support you and your organizations and your colleagues get them trained yeah, yeah, yeah. and uh, go through the certification process. So I can help you walk you through the steps. So I'll be sure to um, touch base with you separately. Thank you so much. We'll appreciate that. We'll appreciate the training. We'll appreciate any any partnership. Uh, however, well you you you, you feel uh, is good to join hands with us uh, as we move work together in this journey. We are we are very much humble and uh, we welcome the gesture. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Um, so I just I see we are almost done. Uh, just closing. Does anybody have any comments or questions in closing? If not, um, I'd really like to take this opportunity to thank you again, Peter, um, and your colleague for this amazing presentation. And um, I, we will all stay in touch and I'll be sure to also share your presentation with the group. Thank you so much. You're very humble and God thank bless you. Thank 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 you. Bye.